The anime art style is hard to make in 3D, but I'm going to show you how to do it without ever picking up a paintbrush. Let me explain. Studio Ghibli and Makoto Shinkai's films have some of the most stunning visuals in the anime art form, but these visuals take a lot of time and artistic talent to paint, and if you're like me, you probably don't have much of either. <laughs> so in this series, I'll show you the best techniques I've learned to make any painted anime texture from scratch in Blender with no artistic talent required. Hi, welcome to the Comfy Mug channel. My name is Christian, and I spend countless hours learning how to make anime stuff in Blender so that it's quick and easy to learn for you. In the next few minutes, I'll outline the five steps I use to set any scene up for anime shaders. And in the next few videos, I'll show you the top three nodes I use, and a lot more techniques to make any shader look painted in the anime style. So subscribe with notifications turned on so you don't miss out on any future tips or secrets. Now, before working in Blender, it's really important to start with a reference image of what you want to make. The ability to compare 3D textures and models to the 2D styles they're modeled after is guaranteed to save you time, especially in the anime style. There are a lot of places you can find reference images, but I personally use Pinterest because it's easy to find quality references for exactly what I'm looking for. I would recommend picking out one or two images to start, but if you don't know what you're looking for yet, I made a Pinterest board of all different types of anime references for you to browse through. Check out the link in the description. Now, after importing a reference image or two into Blender, I like to set up my scene with an object that matches the basic edge flow of my reference. What do I mean by that? No matter what you're looking to make, your reference will have edges ranging from rough to smooth and these edges will influence the way your textures read, so choosing an object that has a similar edge flow will already set you up for success. Lighting your object will also help with that. I try to match the lighting of my main reference image as close as possible, and it's pretty easy to do. Usually, a reference's lighting will consist of a sunlight set between 1 and 3, and an optional point or box light on the opposite side of your sun. The world's color value will also help match the shadow depth of your reference. This is really simple to match if you just color pick your reference in an area where it has the darkest shadows. Now, Blender can be optimized for two different types of lighting depending on what render engine you're using. I tend to use the EV engine as it makes production run much faster and it's particularly built for non-photorealistic renders. The last thing we need to do is go to our render properties and enable Bloom for better lighting, as well as turn the view transform in our color management tab from filmic to standard. By default, Blender starts with the filmic look, which desaturates the colors of your scene. Switching this to standard will allow us to see the true colors and push that anime look a little more. And with our scene set up, we'll be ready to start working on our anime shaders. So like the video and subscribe with notifications so you don't miss out. Support me on Patreon as well and get some sweet anime assets in return. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you here next time at the Comfy Mug.